we'd like to welcome to our fifth part of our dedicated teaching regarding the coming um, evil alien agenda delusion that is on the horizon. And this next part <clears throat> is entitled Cosmic Disclosure, The Message for Humankind. This was the first message that this Corey Good guy, he's not a good guy, okay, but his name's Good and I call him a guy. Anyway, um, this is the first message he gave. Uh, when he was interviewed and I'm saying this because I think a lot of this is going to be part of a lot of what he's saying is going to have a lot to do with the coming disclosure okay that we're going to be faced with as Christians and again I'd rather you hear it from me first than from them quote them so that we can filter this and and look at this from a biblical standpoint uh, because it seems as though we're getting closer and closer to this. We have so many things pointing that this is going to happen in, in the near future. Lord have mercy, it could happen this month to a certain extent. With the Pope coming over here with all the stuff at the UN and, and all the stuff that could potentially happen in September. I don't know. So I'm going to go ahead and play this and um, we'll go from there. Message for we mankind. are interviewing a truly remarkable man, Corey Good, age 45, originally from Texas, and you still live in Texas, actually. And what he has done here is to come forward as an insider and share with me more information about what's really going on behind the scenes in the so-called secret government and secret military programs and their development and industrialization of our solar system. It's a truly remarkable story because I've interviewed dozens of insiders over the years with classifications sometimes 35 levels above the President of the United States. I've withheld about 90% of that information from the public because A, it could get people killed, B, I didn't want to release things that would then spoil me being able to figure out who the real insiders were. Corey came along and he not only knew the 90%, he had many other puzzle pieces that I had been looking for. I knew there was something that people weren't telling me, and it all came together. So, Corey, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Thank you. I understand that what you're about to tell us is so far out that people are going to have a really hard time accepting this, particularly if they don't already have a background in this. So, instead of trying to hold them by the hand and take this slowly, let's just dive right in. And if you could really quickly give us an overview of your involvement with what this whole space program subject has been in your life. For me, it started at the age of six years old when I... Okay, sorry, I messed up there. Um, to give you a little more background, this, he, this is like the first of like 50 interviews this, this guy did. And um, <clears throat> he, he, again, he comes off as very credible. He does not come off as a... He comes off as a very serious person. Um, not a jokey guy. I'm not saying that this is real what he's getting into. I'm not saying I buy into every bit of it. I'm not saying I accept it. I'm saying this is his perspective. I don't know if he's had one of those total recall, uh, like they did in the movie Total Recall Memory Dumps, where this has been downloaded into his brain. I don't know. Okay, but regardless of that, I do believe that a lot of what he is saying is going to heavily apply to this disclosure event. And that's why I want to broach this subject. So this isn't the first time we've ever heard this. And um, so I'll go ahead and just let this video play. Was brought into uh, what is known as the MyLab, some pronounce it MeLab programs. I was I identified as uh, an intuitive empath. What does that mean exactly? Intuitive. Uh, you have a deep intuition of uh, things that are possibly about to happen. So pre like pre psychic cog ability. Yeah, precognitive. Another thing, this Gaia TV that we're like Mother Gaia, it's a whole network that they've got up there now. And I had to reluctantly subscribe to this thing in order to get these interviews. You, you're not going to find these on the internet as far as I know. You have to subscribe to this to find these out, to find this information out. And that's why I don't think a lot of people, this hasn't broke on a lot of levels yet because this is a pay-only subscription. And um, it's in a very professional setting, 
professional, like, high-tech uh, place they're doing the interview. Um, this is not B-rated. This is not some little, you know, dog and pony little thing here that they're doing. This is a very professional setting that they're doing this interview in. Abilities and empathic uh, being you have a strong emotional connection with others around you. Um, you can feel what they're feeling and, con and connect with them emotionally. That was um, a skill set that was uh, desired and uh, I was trained and that was enhanced and it was enhanced to the point to where I was around 12 or 13 years old, me and a few of the people that I was training with being brought into a program to where we were what they called IE support for the Earth delegation um, in a super federation. And this was a, a federation of a large amount of ET federations that met to discuss the uh, grand experiment. What was this experiment? What were these ETs doing? There was a group of 40 human-looking ETs that were pretty much always present and up to 60 at other times that were present. There were 22 genetic programs that were going on. What does that mean? What's a genetic program? Uh, programs of them mixing their genetics and manipulating our genetics. And, and that was ongoing? Yes, it's ongoing right now. And uh, Okay, right there alone. Right there alone. Again, what was going on in Noah's day? The commingling of fallen angelic DNA with human DNA creating this abomination. What is he openly admitting to right up front as the interview starts of these 50 interviews? What is he openly saying? Human looking ET entities, they look human. And I'm sure that they have the ability to probably shapeshift from what I've seen. They can, they can look human one way and they can look what their other genetics in another way. Most of them have that ability from what I've seen. And they're meeting with Earth delegations and they've got all of these different genetic breeding programs going on in order to combine with our DNA. Why do you think they'd be so concerned with us? Why is it they have to, why is it they have to mess up our DNA? You know? Well, why is it that the giants were so, well, they were made in God's image and, in, 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 you know, they're trying to prevent now the book of revelation and daniel and other places the end time prophecies are made from ever happening just like satan was trying to do when the fallen angels fell in noah's day to wipe out humanity so that the savior could not come through the human seed line lineage this is why they're doing this and as it was in the days of noah so shall it be in the days of the coming of the son of man well this is what we're getting and he's openly admitting to this right off the bat okay co-mingling and messing with our DNA. The Bible says that they, in Daniel, they, meaning some other rate, some other um, species or whatever you want to call it, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave. That is in reference to these fallen angels. That is in reference to these breeder programs we see when we research anything about the gray abduction plans and all of this uh, obsession with the um, reproductive organs of men and women when they go into these breeding program or when they get abducted and when they have recall what is happening to them on the most horrific levels two to three percent of the population they can't all be crazy it's always about the reproductive areas particularly of the women and, and implanting them and them getting pregnant and then them, the baby disappearing all of a sudden after they get reabducted again and our government working with them so much of the time and it's like whoa it's all about defiling our DNA, which is what I've said over and over again. And this is just further evidence and proof of that. But they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave. Cleave means to aptly fit. So I do believe there's probably a problem with their alien breeder program. Maybe it hasn't worked out exactly like they want it to. Because the Bible does predict this in Daniel, and I think that this was done 
regarding the end time so that Satan wouldn't be able to fulfill his plan as maybe he thought he would be able to. So I got to believe there's some glitches in the alien breeding program. Because the, Bi but the that one verse in the Bible, I believe that. This is what this was all about. And uh, the uh, Earth delegates had been trying to get become a part of this for a long time. And they were finally able to get a seat. And as uh, the intuitive impasse, when we So they're saying that the people of Earth, our delegates, were trying to get a, a seat at Satan's table to try to have Satan throw them a little table scrap. Oh, please, please, Satan, let us sit at your seat. Let, let, let us come in here and, and, and bargain with all the, the, uh, the hybrid alien races or whatever, you, you Nephilim abominations that you are, commingling our, our, and defiling our DNA. Please give us a seat at your table. This is basically what he's saying. They finally let him in. We were sitting there. We didn't know what was going on because a lot of what was going on was happening in this uh, ancient ET language that's real monotone that we didn't understand. And some of what was going on was going on telepathically. So we were just sitting there and we were given this device that was a uh, glass smart pad that's kind of like an iPad that um, had access to the ET basically database. And we were told to keep our minds occupied by looking through all this material and this also helped us with our intuitive empath abilities in detecting <clears throat> danger or deception. What kind of stuff were you able to look at on these pads? It was mainly they wanted us looking at the information about these uh, 22 genetic um, experiments that were going on. But we had access to all types of other... Remember, the 22 genetic experiments were going on, he even said up front, was the, basically the commingling of their DNA with our DNA. Creating these abominations that were most likely in the room or byproducts of them. Information. And depending on each of us, we all had our own interests. We would look at all kinds of information. And there's so much information that I looked at. It's almost like, you know, looking back at your college days, all the books that you read and all the information you looked at, how much of it do you retain, you know, like that? Um, you know, um, there was just so much information. Did you ever have a question that you asked that you couldn't get the answer to where it just says, I don't know? Uh, no, no. I mean... You were, you were pretty much given the information that was available. Um, you, would run you would run across certain things that um, the human delegation and all that. Sorry, I stopped it there. That our group were not privy to. But uh, pretty much all the information was open to us. What did the screen look like? Was it similar to an iPad or? No, it was just, it looked like almost like a piece of plexiglass. Unremar unremarkable if you saw it. If, if, they, if they would have dropped it out of the window and you found it in a field, you would pick it up and you would, you would not know it was anything special. Um, you would put it on your hand and uh, you would have to activate it with a mental, a mental component and it would pop up in your <clears throat> language, the information, you would access the database through your mind, and it would show what you wanted. It would show uh, text, pictures, video, and the, the video and pictures uh, were holographic in a way that it came off the screen a little bit. I mean, it didn't totally come out of the screen in and, and, and holographic. And this is just some of the technology I, I do believe that they have su they have suppressed. And, and, you know, like they said, whatever you see openly them selling, like, in the open market, we usually have, our technology is like 50 years ahead of that, what they actually have. So I would have no problem believing that part. Like ways some people would think. But it had, like, just this 3D depth kind of holographic view to it. And could you still see your hand at that point underneath no. the glass? No. 
So it would darken first. Right. It would, it would, yeah, it would totally go opaque or black or, or whatever before uh, it started to um, produce images or text. Did they have any buffers or security firewalls? If you ask certain questions, it tells you it's unauthorized or anything like that? Well, like I said, very, very seldom did uh, you get a, um, um, a screen that was all blue or something that showed that you couldn't get to. But pretty much everything was open. And we had these same devices on the research vessel that gave us access to our own databases. So this is a prevalent technology once you get out into the space program. Yes, and they, and they have much larger screens uh, that they use for um, uh, conferences and demonstrations. Well, obviously you encountered so much information on these pads. Was there any information that jumped out at you as being really significant? that really like shocked you even from what you had already learned by that point? It was really interesting that there were, the information was presented as if, almost as if going back to the college analogy, there were 22 term papers competing with each other and each of these genetic experiment programs were presenting their information in that manner they were somewhat competing with each other. They were so 22 different genetic programs that these supposed alien races to commingle their DNA with our DNA or to defile humans' DNA. And which one is the best? Which one of the 22 is the best? They're all competing on how they can maximally defile human the human genetic code. Again, it always comes back to the DNA. They weren't all working. They weren't all kind of hand in glove working together. Did this involve these human looking extraterrestrials? Yes. <clears throat> Splicing their DNA with ours, that kind of thing? Yes. And manipulating, uh, manipulating our DNA. Um, there was also um, a spiritual component. A, um, they are very much involved in a part of the experiment. It's not just them experimenting on us. They're a part of this grand experiment too. Do they have a goal? Why are they doing this? Why do they care? That I, I do not know. I don't know. Oh, I know. <laughs> I already told you basically why they're doing it. Defile our DNA. And then the spiritual component, he trying to get us to, to um, knowing that once the DNA has been defiled, there's, they're, they're going to insert their own God in there. And why are they doing it? Well, we're created in God's image. They're hell bound. These, these things are pure evil. They're an abomination in the sight of God. And their goal through their master, Satan, is to get as many people into hell and in the lake of fire as possible. So that's their goal. That's the reason they're doing it. And, 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 and it's to try to overthrow what the book of Revelation and Daniel and other parts of, of the Bible predict about the end times. To try to to negate that. If they're doing it just because they can, uh, if they're trying to create um, a, uh, a su some sort of super being, but uh, a lot of it didn't, you know, why would they try to create, uh, mix all of their best genetics together and then manipulate us and civiliza our civilization to keep us down? How long do you think this program has been in action for? Um, of the 22 different programs, they've been going on for different lengths of time. But gen the genetic manipulation of what we are has been going back at least 250,000 years. Wow. Yeah. Sorry, I had to be a little bit sarcastic there. Um, yeah. 250,000 years. And I have a um, some oceanfront property in Arizona I'd like to sell you. Again, it's always about the big deception about, oh, it's billions of years, 250,000, oh, we were here millions of years or whatever. We created you. This is all going to go back to the ancient astronaut theory. It's all going to go back to 
refuting the word of God and saying that you've, you've messed everything up. God didn't create the world in six days. He didn't do any of that stuff. It all evolved. We were your creators to begin with. There is no such thing as this God in the sky that you think there is. And again, that's what it's all about is putting doubt in your head. But these programs are, they, they vary in their length from, you know, 5,000 going, they're, they're all different length, lengths of time. This doesn't sound like something that our secret earth government or elected government would want these folks to be doing. Could we stop them? I, I don't think so. I mean, this is something that we've just recently been able to uh, beg to get a seat at their table, to, to be a part of the discussion. So would these be negative-oriented extraterrestrials or more neutral, not really the benevolent type? It depends on your point of view. It, it's, it's all amount of uh, it's, it's, it's perspective. It's, it's hard to say uh, this group is positive, this group is negative out of all those groups because they see what they're doing as, as, a, as a positive thing. Well, of course they do. I mean, Satan sees what he's doing as positive, I'm sure. And the fallen angels and his devils and his minions and whatever flavor that they may come in all sees what they're doing as positive. The old big... Sis boom ba ra ra ra, big satanic effort toward you know the one world system under Antichrist, you know. So of of course they're not going to view it what they're doing is, is negative. They're all evil though. They're all straight from the pit of hell. They're abominations, and they're here to try to, you know, annihilate mankind and destroy his DNA and in to get as many people as possible to take the mark of the beast ultimately. You mentioned on your website something called LOC. Could you tell us what that is? The Lunar Operation Command is um, a facility on the backside of the moon that is a um, kind of a diplomatic neutral um, facility that all, all the different space programs um, have access to and use. Um, it's, there are some people that are stationed there and work there but it's more of a way station. People are coming and going from it all the time to so, go to go to their further uh, further out into um, the solar system and beyond uh, to to go out to other stations, other bases, uh, to go out to their assigned uh, vessels. Walk us through your actual story arc of how you go from your house and eventually end up on this research vessel out in our solar system. Just a brief overview of what that was like. Um, I was transported from my house in the middle of the night by conventional means to Carswell, Carswell Air Force Base. Underneath Carswell Air Force Base, in a secret area of the base, um, you, there's an elevator that takes you very far down. And uh, many people know about the tram system that runs underneath the United States. I've and heard insiders call it a sub-shuttle. Yeah, it's a, a shuttle system. It's like a monorail going through a tube. Okay, again, I've done that dedicated study on the subterranean underground base study. You can, it's in this PDF, or you can also look it up at contendingfortruth.com where we talk about that. And it's... It's uh, like a maglev and also in a, uh, a vacuum tube. I was transported from there to another location to where I was transported uh, to the LOC through uh, what some call uh, Stargate type technology or portal technology. Okay. I ended up at... Now... I don't think that, again, Hollywood has devoted all the time to shows like Stargate SGI, Stargate Atlantis, the dedicated movies about Stargates, all of the other movies that we would call Stargates, portals, wormholes, if there was no truth or validity behind any of it. I just don't, really don't think that. So, I'm just saying, what he's saying here could be the truth. I'm not saying it is. 
But I'm telling you, they telegraph their punches, and that's one they've really, really, really telegraphed a lot of, where, is the Stargate technology. The LOC, or Lunar Operation Command. And um, I was then uh, put onto this uh, manta-looking craft. Like and, a stingray shape? Yeah, like a stingray or a mantis, manta ray-looking okay. uh, craft. <laughs> and uh, with a bunch of other people, and then we were uh, transported from the moon further out into the solar system. So there was some sort of hangar at the Lunar Operations Command? Yes, there's a series of hangars. This is the larger hangar. Okay. And How uh, big is this Manta craft for conventional measurements? Uh, about 600 people could fly in it. Wow. So it's pretty large. Yeah. It flew us to our destination. How which, long were you at the LOC before you boarded the Mantacraft? It wasn't long at all. Uh, there was, uh, that's where I uh, signed papers, even though I was too young to legally sign legal papers. And uh, it was ex explained to me that I was doing a 20-year commitment. They called it the 20 and back. Did it look like some futuristic set off Star Trek Next Generation when you're in there? What, what, what did it look like? Just uh, mainly real narrow halls and uh, regular, regular looking doors. Um, but it, it, it was nothing. They didn't. It didn't have like Star Trek doors that sh 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 you know closed. It wasn't really super advanced in that way. So, if you filmed the inside of it, you could easily convince somebody that it was just a building here. Oh yeah, definitely. Okay. What did the hangar look like? Did the hangar look anything special? The hangar looked uh, very, very much like a like a naval facility. Okay. Like a, a mixture of a naval uh, submarine and air uh, aircraft hangar facility. Once you got inside the Manta, how long were you flying for? Maybe 30, 40 minutes. Okay. And what was the next thing that happened? Next thing that happened was that I got to see the um, uh, research v uh, vessel that I was going to be assigned to for the first time. How long were you on this space vessel for? I was assigned to the research vessel for six years. And you said that the whole term of service was 20 years? Yes. Now, again, I have seen report after report after report in the last four to five months and he's not the only one saying this about missions like this, that people that are recruited into the military, they typically have this really specialized high IQ skill set, and they're recruited at a very young age. They sign these non-disclosure agreements, and they're brought to these places for 20 years, 20 year assignments, Mars, wherever, you name it. Now, I'm not saying it's true. But I'm telling you, this is what they're saying. And if and if there was, if disclosure happened, and all of a sudden you had a legion of these people coming to the forefront saying, "Hey, listen, here's here's what's been going on off planet for like the last forty or fifty years." Again, I want you to be able to hear it here first, so that you're not blindsided by this. I'm not saying it's true. I'm saying this may be used as an integral part of the grand deception to convince people that this is all the way it is. It's all reality. Yeah, there's good aliens. There's bad aliens. And we got this big thing. And we just got to get with the right guys. Got to get with the right team. And, and, and get the evil guys out. You know what I mean? It's good cop, bad cop type of thing. So that's, again, um, a big reason I'm doing this. Is there a reason why they only kept you on the research vessel for six years? Uh, the intuitive empath skill set was needed in other programs, so I was moved through multiple programs for the remainder of the 20 years. Hmm. Could you give us an example of one of these programs? <clears throat> one example would be the intruder intercept and interrogation program. What defines an intruder? Someone that's coming into the uh, solar system or into the Earth's atmosphere uninvited or without permission. And you would actually be able to apprehend these folks and ask them questions? 
there was a team that was a part of that program that would do that. I was present during the interrogation mm -hmm. as an intuitive empath. And as you said before, you're trying to detect deception? Right. Some, somewhat, uh, sometimes um, when you communicate with these other beings, it's called interfacing. Sometimes I was needed to interface, and sometimes I was there just to read them, uh, read their emotions, uh, and to, to see if they were being truthful, like a human lie and detector. Consciousness works enough the same way that you can read extraterrestrials and it works the same as if it's a human, more or less? Definitely. Hmm. So you left the program after the 20 years of service. Other than some um, follow-up uh, work that they had me do, I ended my, pretty much ended my tenure. On your website, you've mentioned that there are five factions within the secret space program. Could you quickly delineate for us what those five factions are and just a little bit about what each one is like that makes them different from the others? Sure. Um, I'll, I'll start with the oldest, which is uh, Solar Warden. They were started back in the late 70s, 80s, during the uh, SDI, Strategic Defense Initiative, I think is what that stood for, during, uh, just before and after Reagan. And uh, then uh, we have the ICC, the Interplanetary Corporate Conglomerate, which is corporations all over the world that have um, representatives in a like super board, corporate board, that uh, control the infrastructure, the secret space program infrastructure that they have out in space, which is massive. We have uh, Dark Fleet, which is a uh, very secretive fleet that uh, works mainly in the outside of the solar system. We have various black ops military secret space programs that we kind of put into one group. And then we have this uh, global galactic league of nations group that um, was somewhat of a carrot that was offered to all the other nations to have them maintain this veil of secrecy about what was going on in uh, outer space by giving them a space program and giving them a narrative of there's certain threats or possible invasions. We need to come together and work together. And uh, at the one facility that I visited a couple times, it, it looked very much like the TV show Stargate Atlantis, where you had a, a real laid back environment, people walking around in jumpsuits with patches from all different countries of the world. They are almost completely outside of the solar system as well. You mentioned the term the Alliance a lot, and I think there might be some confusion there. There's the Earth Alliance. They have a completely different uh, agenda. Their agenda is uh, to, to basically create a new financial system and uh, to take down the cabal and, and, and a few other things in, in their agenda. And They're the good guys. And uh, then there's the Space Alliance, and it's made up of what started off with as mainly the Solar Warden faction, and then defectors from the other secret space programs. And these defectors from the other space programs left their programs with their craft and intelligence and information and joined the Secret Space Program Alliance. What's the sequence of events that led to you becoming a whistleblower and that has led to what we're now seeing with this push towards disclosure? I was contacted by uh, actual a uh, higher density ET group uh, that uh, has now been known as the uh, Blue Avians. I and avian means bird? Bird. So what would these folks look like? They're Eight feet tall, 
Um, they look uh, very bird-like. Uh, they're blue to indigo in color with feathers. When uh, you say very bird-like, though, are you saying they actually are birds with wings? and No wings. Um, they have uh, a very human-looking torso, arms, hands. So they're hominid. Feet. It's like a bird head on a human uh, body? Yes, but the, they don't have a long beak like a lot of people are trying to depict on the Internet. It's kind of a, uh, it's a real soft, um, flexible uh, beak. And uh, <laughs> I know this sounds just ridiculous. Okay, I get it. I get it. But again... <laughs> If you're going to hear it anywhere, I'd rather you hear it here first. And I'm not saying this is going to be the backbone of the disclosure. And this is what they're going to come out and say first day. But ultimately, what they're going to end up saying is going to be far more radical than what we're talking about here today. Okay, so they're actually showing a picture of one of these one of these blue avions and, and uh, what they actually you know look like. They're supposedly these higher consciousness, fifth density, whatever... And they're here to obviously usher us into a grand new um, age of enlightenment where we would become as gods, basically. Uh, they, as they speak, when they speak, they, they do a sign language or motion with one hand and then they, they move their mouth around and then they communicate telepathically. So who are these blue avians? Where do they come from? Do they have an agenda? The... Blue Avians told me that them and the uh, other beings that they are working with come from 6th through ninth density. Hmm. And that... And what is a density? Everything around us is made up of uh, matter, energy, thought. It's all made of vibration. And uh, it comes from a different vibration or frequency. So it's like another plane of existence. Right. Is it somewhere else in the galaxy or the universe, or is it around us? It's not in a, in a far, far away planet close to the center of the galaxy or anything like that. It's all around us. It's real close and far away at the same time. It's basically the, the other dimensions that exist where the spirit, spirit entities, like even good angels and bad angels and demons and devils exist okay which is actually more real than our plane of existence if you think about it because that's the that's the realm of reality that is going to live and last i mean when you when you die whether you're saved or or unsaved that's that's these these are the dimensions that we would actually go into once we've left our body our soul and spirits left our body so their reality is actually far more real than the reality we live in. They can be around us, but we can't see them. Okay, just like a good angel could be around you, but you can't see it. Or a devil or a demon, and you can't see it. I mean, unless you have your third eye open, which I don't advise. So I think that's what he's in reference to here. And what is their agenda? What are they here for? They've been here for quite some time. They've been... Uh, observing, but they're here uh, for uh, there's, uh, we're moving into a part of the galaxy that is uh, a very um, high energetic uh, part of the galaxy uh, that's going to change the density of our solar system and our local star cluster. And is that something that they've told you, or is that something that in the space program you had tangible evidence of? We had uh, tangible, tangible evidence of that in the space program uh, that's been studied for some time, but that's something they told me as well. Okay, and when if we go into a different density, what are these blue avians telling you will happen to human life as we know it now? That um, we're going to uh, we're going to go through a transfer, transformational experience that um, is going to change us on a uh, consciousness uh, level, mainly. What would that look like? Um, would we become more psychic, more telepathic? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, lot of theories. I haven't been told that, you know, we're going to be able to do this and that. Um, I've heard a lot of different theories. Um, I don't know if it's going to happen to everyone at once or if 
there's some people that are more spiritually evolved that are going to start showing these signs earlier. I, I don't have all the answers. I'm, I'm not a guru. I, I, I really don't. What it's basically going to boil down to is taking us out of the old world order into the new world order, out of the age of Pisces, into the age of Aquarius, where we'll be as gods, and we're just going to be fulfilling our evolutionary process, and these supposed good aliens are going to help us along the way regarding that. I don't have all the answers. So are these blue avians looking out for our highest good, or do they have a hidden agenda? How do we know we can trust them? They're, they're definitely uh, of a positive polarity, um, from what I understand. If they were of a positive polarity, they would be pointing to the Lord Jesus Christ the, and Father God in the Bible and his sovereignty and their majesty and their dominion over the universe. Because they don't do that, I know they're straight from the pit of hell, and that's all I need to know. Of sixth and higher density uh, beings, they're not agenda oriented as we try to project onto them. Uh, for our third yes, density way of thinking, everything we do is agenda oriented. It's about making money. Oh, but they it's transcend about, that. Uh, manipulating people to do. They transcend it because they're so much better. They're good demons. They're good fallen angels. Trust them. Or think the way we think. Um, we can't project that onto. A higher density being and say that they're going to be behaving or thinking the same way they are here uh, with these giant spheres to help diffuse these large tsunami energy waves that are entering our solar system and they're diffusing this energy to where we don't get too much at one time and to give us more time to prepare. If they didn't use... Because they care about us so much. Is these fears, what, what did they say would happen? That uh, a lot of people would go mad and there would be a lot of chaos. And when you mention these fears... Like that's not already happening? If they were really trying to do something good, why aren't they shutting down CERN? Knowing what that's trying to do. Why wouldn't they shut down the abortion clinics knowing because there's such a high density and so wonderful and so benevolent, knowing on a spiritual level how that is defiling the land? Why wouldn't they try to do that kind of... No, 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 no. That's, that's all fine and dandy. They're going to put giant spears out in the universe though and deflect energy. What are we looking at? What, people are not seeing spheres in their telescopes. No, no. These are also other density and um, a lot of people th are thinking that these are giant spacecraft and I am almost certain after my many <laughs> travels in these spheres that these are these spheres on a giant macro level these are these little orb beings are <coughs> also these giant spheres what are the orb beings they're um, one of the five uh, beings from the Sphere Alliance that um, are, of, are one of the higher density of, their, uh, of the five beings. So you've actually had in-person meetings with these Blue Avians? Yes. My name was mentioned as a choice, as a delegate, to be a part of communications between this group, uh, the Secret Space Program Alliance Council, and also to start uh, being a, a speaking on their behalf with this old Super Federation Council that I had uh, sat in as an intuitive empath support as a young teenager. I was trying to talk my way out of this delegate position. I'm not a public speaker. I have a weak voice. I was giving all of these excuses why I should not be a delegate. Um, I was giving these excuses after I had been brought to one of these massive spheres that are out in space. And um, I, I met this blue avian named Ra Tier Air. And as I was trying to talk my way out of being a delegate, he actually went to his nest, and they had this meeting. Okay, so they were in his nest, and, you know, he was had this nice meeting, because uh, it's a bird, and, you know. Um, he 
walked up very close to me, put his hand on my forearm, and was communicating to me telepathically that I need to let go of all the negative. Oh. Quit thinking about the negative. And his hand was very powder soft on my skin. It's the only t- See, I don't trust him from that standpoint. He, he hasn't had an honest day of work in his whole life. Powdery soft hand? Come on. I mean, we're talking about a guy that's never picked up a weight. He's he's not he's not turning a wrench. He's not a grease monkey. How can you trust a guy like that? He does he knows nothing about manual labor. You know, he's lived a cushy life. Come on, he's a bird. Okay? His his he's probably married to like a chicken. I don't know. I mean, come on. Let's get real. He physically touched me. And then he told me that what was important was the message. What is their message? Their message for humanity is that, and it's the tenet of many religions, is that we need to become more loving. We need to become forgiving of ourselves and forgiving of others. Thus, stopping the wheel of karma. We need to focus on becoming more service to others on a daily basis. And we need to focus on raising our vibration and our consciousness. Well, you see a lot of people. How many people are going to fall hook, line, and say, who couldn't agree with that? Who couldn't agree with that? Basically, I mean, other than the wheel of karma thing and the raising your vibrational stuff. I mean, of course, the Bible does say you reap what you sow and as you, you would sow do unto men, you know, as you would want them to do, you do unto them the golden rule. Do unto others as you've done unto yourself. It's pretty biblical. What they're saying there sounds all nice and flowery and new agey and wonderful and just, you know. So understand a lot of people are going to fall for this and a lot of them that label themselves as Christians are going to fall for this. Who are aggressive commenters on articles saying that the elite want to steer us into a one-world religion. How would we be able to know that this isn't just another PSYOP to try to get us all marching in lockstep with some new controllers? Well, that's what they said, and what I put on my webpage, is that you don't need to change your faith or your religion. You can use these beliefs or the tenets of all the major religions. I mean, this is not really anything new. Okay, so what he's doing now is they're flashing up Brahmanism, never do unto others what you would hurt, what would hurt you if done unto you. Malaharta 515, Confucianism. What we do not wish to be done to us, let us not do it to others. Antelex 513. Then you have St. Matthew 712, Christianity. Do unto others as you have done unto you. Taoism, make is yours the prophets of your followers whatever i can't read it um buddhism do not offend others as you would not like to be offended uh judaism these are all quotes from different writings within these different religions and understand like i've said in the past this is what satan is going to key on with the coming one world religion what do we have in common we can all agree on this because no religion is going to come out other than Satanism, flat out, which says, if it feels good, do it, and hurt your fellow man, and stuff like No, most of the other religions have some flowery veneer, have some veneer of righteousness that they can appeal to. Anybody could get on that page. Anybody could agree with that. Judaism, Islam, Islam. Uh, says no one will be a true believer unless he wishes for others what he wishes for himself. Yeah, okay. Why, if that's the case, why are they raping little girls and all that? I mean, they are wishing that on themselves. You know, so again, so much hypocrisy commingled with these verses. So understand, this is how all the religions are going to come together. And at first they're going to say, oh, no, 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 you can do your own thing. They're probably going to say that off the bat. Oh, no, 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 you don't have to change your religion. Of course not. And all the other religions are going to just flock to it other than true Bible-believing Christianity. And they're, they're going to be the one in the end. And everybody's going to look at them just like they do now, like the homosexuals look at them and the pro-abortion and all the pro-evil crowd and say, Oh, you know, you, you stinking Christians. You're hypocrites. You think you're better than us. And you're not better. 
And you know what? We need. Well, I think we want to outlaw you and your behavior because we don't like you. You think you're better and you're not any better. Why can't you get on the same page as everyone else? That's where it's all coming. And this is the beginning of it. It's, the time is short, you know, there, it needs to be done. We need to start focusing on, you know, if you're a Christian, if you're a Muslim, if you're a Buddhist, you need, you can, you can remain, that can remain your faith. So they're not trying to pose as the new God. Absolutely not. And one of the things, lies, maybe not right out of the get go gate, maybe not right then, but. Oh, they will definitely be posing. The Antichrist and false prophet will definitely be posing as God. You will have to worship the beast. You will have to take the mark of the beast. There won't be any options on that. Event. But, of course, initially they're not going to say that. They're going to come out like they're nice as pie. Oh, we're sweet. No, no, no. We're not trying to impose anything on you. We're, we're really cool cats, and, and we're, we're just here to help you, and help you move your next step on the evolutionary rung. So they have forced into my head is that I need to make sure that this does not become a cult or a religion. And I don't know the history of it, but apparently they've tried this three other times in the past, and each time their messages have been distorted and humans have used it for control and turned it into cults and religions. Oh, like Christianity? Guaranteed, that's going to be one of the three times they tried because they're so good and so benevolent. Even though they're not pointing toward the Lord Jesus Christ or Father God or the Word. No, no. We tried then and you distorted it and you turned it into a cult. And you really messed it up bad, you Christians. Guaranteed they're going to be the focal point center of their disdain. Guaranteed. Well, obviously we've just gotten started here. This is really fascinating information and I just want to say on a personal level that it validates so many things I've been studying for so many years uh, and done as much as I can to try to put scientific evidence behind. So we got a lot more to talk about. We're just getting started, but I'm really happy that you wanted to do this and come forward, and I honor you for your courage and bravery. I know you got two kids. You gave up a six-figure job for this, so this is really a major thing for you to come forward, and I really appreciate it. So thank you, Corey. Thank you. All right. Ultimately, good old Corey, there's nothing but a tool of Satan. You know, I'm not, I, I pray to God, I, I don't have any hate for the guy, I don't, I, I pray to God his soul be saved, and this guy interviewing him, but obviously they're, they're on the wrong path, okay, they've bought into a, a way of thinking, a paradigm, and have been heavily brainwashed, and are primed to bring this brainwashing forth, to basically delude all of humanity, so, um, that's all I have for part five and we will go to part six next.